Now this is a topic which is rarely covered because it is very taboo and there's a lot of shame and guilt that's involved in it. But today we're going to be diving deep in a very short amount of time and I'm going to be explaining to those of you who identify as straight men but sometimes you've been finding yourself doing things that really don't match your sexual orientation. You may find yourself watching gay pornography. You may find yourself viewing transgender or transsexual pornography. You may find yourself even trying to have encounters with gay men or with transgender individuals. But you do not identify as a gay person. And in some cases, there's high remorse. And in other cases, there is low remorse. If you're wondering what high remorse and low remorse is, I spoke about it last week. There are also some men who identify as straight men who find themselves on apps trying to meet other men. This is actually pretty common and something that I have started seeing more and more of in my coaching practice. Now, there are four reasons why straight men end up not only viewing gay pornography, but engaging in behavior that could be considered gay when they identify as straight men. And brothers, for those of you who are watching this, please keep an open mind. This is not just my opinion. This is something that I have learned as a professional over the past few years, helping men to end the out of control behavior. So keep an open mind to some of the things you're going to hear because you might be surprised. The first reason is the obvious one. When there's an escalation in your addiction to pornography, basically you've been watching so much pornography that you're desensitized to regular pornography. And in order for you to get more dopamine, you end up viewing more and more taboo material. You end up watching transsexual pornography and in many cases, you end up watching gay pornography. That's the first reason. The second reason is a little bit more ambiguous. And as I said, keep an open mind. And that reason is that there are some men who actually have a sexual interest in certain men. And this doesn't mean that they are gay. It just means that once in a while, they have this sexual interest. They never talk about it. You may never express it. It's just there. But the problem with high-speed internet pornography is that it's taken something which is a very small part of you, something that you rarely gave attention, you probably never even fantasized or masturbated to it, but pornography took it and magnified it. Now you have a problem. The third reason is linked to a past of childhood sexual abuse. And as I've mentioned in the past, men who have experienced trauma sometimes unconsciously try to gain control over the trauma by reliving that situation. And that's how a portion of men end up watching gay pornography and end up acting out with other men. And the final one might sound a little strange, but it is true. And some men watch gay pornography and even end up having sex with other men because it is practical. Now I've seen this in different situations. I have seen men who are addicted to pornography but simply don't have the opportunity to meet other women. They don't have the game or they never had game or charm to meet other women. They live in a culture where it's not appropriate to do that, but they're still at a very high level of the addiction, a level five or a level six, and they have a strong urge to act out. And so the easiest way for them to act out is with gay men. It's just a practical way of acting out. Now, the interesting thing is that these men are not gay. And here's the reason why. They only act out and have sex with other men. They only view gay pornography when they are triggered. The moment you orgasm, the moment you complete that sexual act, you are usually immediately filled with shame or guilt. And I spoke about shame or guilt. Shame is when you identify as I am unworthy or I am a bad person. And guilt is when you tell yourself, I have done something bad. So you're filled with shame or guilt, but you have no interest in these men beyond something sexual. And usually it's as a result of your porn addiction. This fourth reason is just a practical way to release that urge. And the reason why I prefaced this video with saying, have an open mind is because in many cultures, it's such a taboo subject that men want to take the easy way out. So other men will say, it's either you're straight or you're gay. That's how it used to be back in the day. And that is, maybe that's true, but unfortunately high-speed internet pornography has fucked all of this up. It has messed things up and we need clarity. Men need clarity and hence this video. Now, there is a way to find out if you are really gay. 
especially if you are filled with shame and if this is really holding you back and holding the secret within you might be ruining your life. So there's a great test by a gentleman called Joe Court from his book, Is My Husband Gay, Straight or Bi? And it's a very simple test for you to identify whether you are truly gay or not. And here's how it goes. There are a few different tests or scenarios. And the first one is called the beach test. It's a very simple question you ask yourself. When you are on the beach where everybody is scantily clad, wearing bikinis, wearing swim shorts and whatnot, are you naturally drawn towards men or are you naturally drawn towards women? So when you show up on the beach, do you start looking at the men and checking them out or are you checking out the women? Obviously, if you are checking out the women exclusively or at least first for the most part, it is likely that you are not gay. The second is the waking up test. Now, if I were to ask you right now to close your eyes for a moment and just imagine waking up in the morning, do you feel comfortable waking up next to a man or a woman? Waking up and cuddling and kissing and being intimate early in the morning, first thing in the morning, with a man or a woman? Now, if the thought of waking up next to a man is absolutely just repulsive to you, which even every time that I go through this test with a client, the moment I think of it, I'm like, nah, <laughs> that's not my thing. Now, if the thought of that is repulsive or it's a complete no, then you're probably not gay, right? If the only person that you can think of waking up next to is a woman, then your behavior with pornography, your acting out behavior with men is honestly induced by something else. The next test is called the falling in love test. So whenever you think of falling in love with somebody and everything that involves being romantic, holding hands, going on dates, all those things, taking selfies together, do you imagine yourself doing it with a man or with a woman? It's very, it's very simple. If most of your fantasies involve men, then it's possible that you are gay. If they involve men and women doing romantic things together, it's possible that you are bisexual. But if it is completely out of the question, if you're like, dude, I have never done that before. I may have watched gay porn, I may have watched porn with transgender individuals, but I have never in any case like listened to a romantic song and thought about like doing things with a man, then you're probably straight. Yeah be at ease, okay? And the final test is actually homophobia. Now here's the thing, the gentleman who wrote this book, Joe Court, found that men who were repressing their homosexual desires were more likely to be homophobic. Whereas on the other hand, straight men who had sex with gay men or who viewed gay pornography or who masturbated to pornography involving transgender individuals were really in different towards gay men. In fact, one thing that would happen would be that they would in fact have a more liberal outlook towards gay men, but they really didn't have any animosity towards them, any anger towards them, or any desire to hurt them. They were just not going to do anything romantic with them. They didn't want to wake up early in the morning with them. They didn't want to do anything with them except act out when they were triggered due to their out of control sexual behavior. So homophobia is also another test. If you find yourself having some sort of irrational anger or hatred towards gay people who really didn't do anything towards gay men who may not have done anything to you, then that is something to examine. But it is also important to note that sometimes cultural and societal factors can also teach people how to hate people of a certain orientation. The way that culture and society does with race and different aspects of being human. Now, ultimately, at the end of the day, it is not my job to decide whether a person is gay or straight or whether that works for them or not. It really is up to you to make the decision and it's your responsibility to gather as much information as possible to find out why you're experiencing pain when it comes to engaging in behavior that doesn't match with your sexual orientation. That is something I wanna make very, very clear. And I hope you found this video helpful. 